Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a workshop video for you guys where we try to fix some of the critical flaws that BLI made on their Santa Fe models. Um, in front of us we have a BLI uh, Paragon 4, it's really Paragon 3, uh, Santa Fe 4000 Class 282. We have, uh, we have a Santa Fe Paragon 2, Santa Fe 3800 Class 2102, and not shown here, but I do have one, a BLI uh, 484 uh, 3751 Class, which I will be working on later in the video, but it's not currently shown here. Um, but I wanted to kind of um, I wanted to talk about uh, some of the issues that BLI made when designing these models. Um, and I have said this kind of stuff before, so if you if you've heard all this stuff before about the trailing truck and the and the, and the drawbar, you could skip to this time in the video, and we can move on to actually fixing it. Uh, but basically, I'll kind of talk to you guys about some things I wanted to fix on these engines, and then uh, we'll I'll show clips of the pr progression and you know the stuff. And hopefully, by the end of the video, you'll see an engine that is all upgraded and looks a lot better. This might be a longer video, just giving you guys a heads up. So definitely use the timestamps down below. All right. But anyways, the critical flaw that BLI made with these engines, I don't know when they started doing this. I think it was, this was the first engine they ever made with this uh, terrible drawbar design. But basically, instead of mounting the drawbar normally here, you can see <laughs> normally it'd be mounted here. Um, BLI instead decided to mount the drawbar against the trailing truck uh, spring. And that creates for many, many problems. Um, the, the, the main problem, the first problem is that the, because it's now being supported by the spring. They had to make the spring a whole lot stiffer um, to you know, push down on the drawbar so it doesn't flop like this around. Um, you don't want this to flop and then disconnect from the tender and then you know, your engine runs away from your tender. You don't want that. Um, and so they had to make the spring a lot stiffer to keep that thing tensioned and you know, not flop around. The problem is because the spring also is supporting the trailing truck, um, it's putting a lot more pressure than it needs to on the trailing truck itself. In other words, the trailing truck is pushed down so much harder, almost basically lifting up the back side of the engine, you could imagine. Um, you don't want a really stiff trailing truck or leading truck spring for that matter, because the more the stiffer those springs are, the more it's lifting the engine off the tracks. And basically, uh, you can make your engine extremely heavy, but if your drivers are not getting that weight and it's instead being propped up by both the front and rear trucks, uh, your engine is barely going to pull even with traction tires. And so, you know, this engine could be pulling a whole lot more if it didn't have such st stiff springs on the back here. The front of this engine's fine. Um, so that's why you really don't like the design. You, uh, you should have a separate, you know, system for your drawbar to connect to. Another problem is that because the drawbar is now mounted further back, they couldn't put any details here, which would normally be visible here. Normally you would have, you know, like the, all the various parts of the frame. You can see that there's like, much of the frame is missing and the, that big ugly spring is easily exposed. Um, normally you'd have parts of the frame here that you know would be where the engine would you know the tender and engine would like have like you know sprung bumpers or whatever. Um, here's a brass model that has a really good looking uh, frame. You can see it's all filled in um, and it looks really really solid but yeah this is why you usually want you know, your thing here but that's all missing on the BLM model so it looks like the cab is almost just like free floating on the on the back side. It just looks like it's just floating in air. So with the scope of work I want to do with the three engines, just imagine the 44s back here, um, there's a few things. Uh, I had a, I made a follow-up video on this uh, 282 uh, where um, I discussed a few inaccuracies that BLI made beyond just everything I just mentioned. Um, and that was the fact that they made the a trailing truck too far back. It should be mounted much further forward. Uh, if you want to see a, uh, the video where I talk more in that detail about inaccuracy in this model, uh, feel free to go check out that video. But that's something I want to fix. Um, I want to make the drawbar its own separate mount and then simply have the trailing, so basically make the spring and this uh, screw only attach the drawbar and have the trailing truck just be mounted by this screw. Um, and then also bring the drawbar, maybe uh, maybe bring the trailing truck even further forward. I will see if I actually do that or not. If it's too difficult, I probably will skip that. Um, but that's something I want to try to fix. Um, I want to fill in this big, ugly gap, void. Um, I don't know why, but on a lot of BLI and MTH models, they simply just don't add a frame where the trailing truck is, exposing that really ugly spring. Um, so what I've been doing on my MTH models is I've been custom uh, 3D printing these parts and these take a lot of effort because I need to make the, sure, you know, these curves match exactly the engine's, you know, outline. But uh, I'm trying to make these little uh, frame filler pieces that basically will fill in as much of the frame as possible, covering up the screw, or sorry, the spring, uh, well, while also not interfering with the, tra the travel of the trailing truck. So it won't affect performance, um, but it'll make it look, look a whole lot better. So... That is something I want to plan to do with uh, these two models. The Santa Fe 484 doesn't have that problem. But um, 
yeah, so I want to uh, improve that. I want to shift the trailing truck forward more. I want to make the drawbar uh, have the spring only affect the drawbar, not not affect the trailing truck. And then uh, one other thing I mentioned, and this is true for all three of these engines, that's where the 4A4 comes in, is um, I want to replace the headlights on these. These headlights that BLI used are extremely oversized. They look really, really bad. Um, for comparison, here is a brass model again for comparison. Um, I don't know how obvious it is on camera, but in person it is extremely noticeable how much bigger um, the BLI headlight is. It's way longer and it's also bigger in diameter and it just looks really ugly. In fact, you can see how much it extends past the uh, headlight bracket here. Um, it extends so far uh, forward that it just looks really ugly. Um, you can also see the tube uh, where the light kind of goes through. All in all, just really bad looking. And so I want to replace it with a brass uh, headlight part, which is only like $3. And also add an SMD LED in here to make it a lot brighter. The current headlight's really dim because the headlight's actually mounted inside the boiler instead of out front. Um, so it, it's quite dim for most angles. So uh, I want to improve on those. Um, and so hopefully uh, with the video, you'll see uh, by the end of the video, all these things are fixed. I also, so that uh, the headlights I want to replace on all three models. And I also may or may not repaint the front of these smoke boxes a more metallic color. I kind of prefer a more metallic tarpon gray than the almost matte gray that BLI used for the front of their models. Um, I might do that, I might not. I guess you'll see by the end of the video. But anyways, this I just wanted to show you guys the baseline and the scope of work that I was going to do on these models. And so yeah, hopefully uh, you guys see updates. Alright, so the first update. Uh, I bought three of these uh, Chaos Go headlights. They're quite cheap. And uh, I spent a few dozen hours, uh, probably actually probably about a dozen hours, uh, trialing these, uh, trying to create a trailing truck uh, filler frame, uh, 3D printed model, of course. Um, here's all the failed samples, but I basically just kept on iterating them until I got the right shape that would fit perfectly into the model, and also uh, so it would had enough clearance so the it wouldn't negatively impact trailing truck performance. But you can see here, here's some of the 3D models. Um, that's the bar, that piece, and then here's another piece. And basically, these are just, you know, multiple of these combined together. Ignore this one. This one's actually for the MTH uh, Mohawk, which I'm working at the same time for. But uh, this is for the 282. You can see it's three pieces combined together. And this thing fits. You can see all the complicated curves and shapes here. Um, this thing fits very snugly inside. You can see it's a very clean fit. Um, this is out of the way, so uh, it won't impact trailing truck performance and this hole here is snug so the screw can the, the spring will still fit there i'm going to replace this cone spring with a normal style spring um and then here this is meant to resemble the uh, additional uh, frame you would see here except it's hollow in the middle to allow the drawbar to still swivel left and right um and then here for the 2102 you can see this is actually a split frame design this would be one side of the track pickup this will be the other side so there has to be a gap in the middle um you can see some rather complicated uh shapes there but this is the 2102 shape and this thing fits perfectly like that so you can see there's actually enough space for the spring uh to travel in the middle there um sorry to do this with my hand but you can you can get the idea and then uh it nicely fills in this weird like missing groove that's over there and there's also a nice little divot uh which which accounts for the raised section here so this thing fits nice inside there's some curves to allow it to match up to that. And uh, yeah, so this looks way better in my opinion. But um, now I just need to uh, basically paint these um, black and then install them. And now I need to figure out how to uh, remount the drawbar and separate that from the trailing truck. Because uh, right now, I think if I mount the drawbar the way I want it to, I can't just grind away this area because this... Uh, just the way this trailing truck is mounted. So I got to figure out another way to mount this trailing truck to be separated from the drawbar spring um, and also shift it forward a little bit. So, yeah. All right, update number two. Um, so I have these installed now. Um, you can see that after a little bit of paint, they look quite good. They don't quite match the unpainted blackened frame that you see on these models, but um, the black is much nicer, in my opinion, and uh, actually matches the... Uh, boiler finish very very well um so yeah these turn out really good uh this one has it's long big enough so it doesn't affect the spring i put a little bit of um capped on tape on the end here because this is die cast and again this is a split frame chassis so if the metal uh, drawbar touches this it might short the engine now and i've actually had that happen before a few times so um put a little bit of capped on tape there just so it doesn't do that 
Uh, but yeah, so this one's ready for reassembly, and we will continue working on this guy um, to get the trailing track more accurate and hopefully bring it forward. Um, I already took off the bottom plate here, and I trimmed off a little bit on the end here. This was originally sticking out a little bit further past the uh, thing here, so I just trimmed it back a little bit. Um, next up, I'm going to be trimming. I already trimmed off the, um, the original hole. It's, it was like it came out to like here. Um, I trimmed it off, and I'm going to be drilling a new hole and also probably sanding back some of this material so I can fit this trailing truck further forward. But yeah. All right, so uh, another update. Um, this time I have the frame or the drawbar installed. Um, I'm gonna just use the screw here for only the drawbar. If there is a spring hidden inside there. It's kind of hard to see or impossible to see, but there is a spring so it keeps the drawbar tension so it doesn't just uncouple from the train uh, halfway through. Um, then I found the new screw for this, uh, one that's much flatter and much lower down. Um, this way it doesn't stick out as much. Um, and you can see that I did put a little bend in the drawbar, unfortunately. Um, but now there's more than enough clearance to uh, for it to pivot. And it's at just the right height to um, for the tender to ride on. Now, one thing that was critical was finding a screw that was just the right size. Getting this basically as, as flush to the frame as possible uh, because... The, I also have to say on the top of the uh, trailing truck here because there's not much uh, gap. The way BLI designed it with this giant hump in the middle, um, there, and you can't remove this uh, without without you know because that's where the wheel how the wheel attaches to it. So um, it was really hard to basically make this thing work. But right now the current with the current setup, there is just enough gap riding between the uh, trailing truck and the screw here to not interfere with the truck's up and down motion. Um, there's actually plenty of wiggle room for the truck to go left and right and up and down. Um, I also uh, remounted the screw hole here. This is a 3.30 seconds uh, hole. Uh, you can tell I cut the original hole out. Um, and uh, this one, because the hole is smaller, I had to find a new screw that was also smaller or shorter and thinner and a new spring. Uh, but this way, this setup, uh, the trailing truck has moved much further forward. Um, it aligns up with the uh, frame that I printed. And um, the trailing truck now, or the, the sorry, the drawbar um, is a separate piece, which is really good. Finally, uh, I did did the final assembly, but then I realized that there's still a giant, you know, square or rectangle hole you can see through the frame on. I really didn't like that, so I went back and quickly like catted this up in like two minutes. Uh, this triangle piece, which I then sanded down and painted black, and I also sanded down the uh, screws there. So now this can be put right there and add a little bit more frame to the uh, engine to fill in some of those holes. Um, so yeah, I'll do the final assembly and I'll show you guys how it looks. And with the trailing truck assembled, we can now place this on the table here and we can see how she looks. So yeah, with the addition of the triangle uh, piece there, the frame looks much more flushed out. You can see everything up here is all filled in now. Uh, it's all black. Um, you can see the uh, frame support for the trailing truck, which rests there. And that's directly above the uh, rollers in the trailing truck there, so that's aligned. Uh, the trailing truck still has plenty of space to pivot up and down, left and right. Um, and uh, the trailing truck's now also further forward like it should be instead of being all the way back here, it's now here. Um, which, in my opinion, makes the engine look a whole lot better because before it really looked weird. Um, so yeah, now this engine looks a lot better. The trailing truck is in the correct position. It's all filled in and the, the um, drawbar now is no longer uh, pushing against the trailing truck spring there. Um, now the drawbar has its own little mount. Um. Having finished the uh, 282's uh, trailing truck fill-in, I proceeded to work on a separate project which is doing the same exact procedure on my Pennsylvania Railroad uh, L1S, also made by BLI. This was made Paragon 3, so this was like made five years ago. And looking at them, I noticed so many similarities. I'm pretty certain they actually reused the L1S tooling f to make the 282. You can see the overlap with the same exact, you know, uh, underbody frame, the same similar wheel, um, and the, you know, trailing truck area is identical. Look at it. Um, you can see the same, like, really weird, like, profile here with the weird cutout, um, the same smoke switch location. You'll notice that originally, uh, I've always wondered, you know, what this little, like, random hump here was for, the die cast hump. Um, and looking at the Pennsylvania L1S, you can see that that's actually where the trailing truck screw used to sit. So in order to cut costs, it seems like BLI was reusing the Pennsylvania tooling to make the Santa Fe 282. Um, 
and you can also even see the screws where it used to be here. I had to hide them with this uh, triangle piece I printed. So, um, yeah, so that explains a lot on why the Santa Fe 282's, you know, rear area looks so weird. Because they're trying to use the L1S frame, but then reuse the uh, trailing truck from their Paragon 2 plastic 2102, uh, which, you know, was further back. So they had to relocate the screw hole and, you know, kind of extend the back area here. They're also trying to reuse the Paragon 2 2102's cab. That's why this is plastic, whereas everything else here is die cast. And this, because this cab's also extended, they had to do this weird stuff in the back here. So it kind of explains why this entire area here is like drawn out because they're trying to reuse existing tooling from two different models um, and trying to make do. Think of another way, the prototype Santa Fe 4000 classes would be two, roughly two scale feet shorter than the Pennsylvania Road L1Ss, but because BLI was trying to cut costs and reuse the L1S tooling uh, frame to make their Santa Fe 282s, uh, they had to find somewhere to fill in and extend that extra two feet. And that's why this back area here is so drawn out. Now, I want to clarify that while fundamentally I have nothing against model manufacturers uh, in reusing existing tooling to make new different models. In fact, I think it's a great way of uh, maximizing their tooling life, um, saving some costs and hopefully passing some of those savings down to the customer. However, if, I, if what I think BLI did here is correct, in that they intentionally made significant sacrifices to the accuracy of their models in order to cut costs and reuse, you know, hacks all different tooling from various models in to make this engine. Um, I don't think that's a great idea. I don't think I don't think I can support that. I don't think I agree with that. Um, fundamentally, these engines are marketed to, you know, they're market they're sold as, you know, prototypically accurate, very detailed, and you know, the they they charge a pretty penny for these as well to reflect that. Um, and to do this sort of, you know, jerry-rigging of, of tooling that doesn't work together into making this engine and, you know, having to elongate and make this all weird looking to the point where I can easily tell that there's something wrong with the back here and, and other Santa Fe modelers, I can also see that there's something weird here. Um, I just think that that's kind of one step too far and that in general, I think, you know, reusing tooling is fine, but just if it's done correctly and done appropriately. Uh, and, and I think this was kind of a, kind of a poor example of that. Um, but that being said, it does make my life a lot easier because I could just, you know, reprint it on one of these and put them in this model. So <laughs> makes my life a lot easier, but uh, just wanted to point it out there. Final thing I did for the body of the engine is the wheels. I painted the leading truck and trailing truck wheels and also the axle ends for the drivers on these engines. I don't know why BLI likes to keep them unpainted, but I decided to paint them black and try to match them as best as I can with the finish on the wheels themselves. So they blend in really well. So anyways, wanted to add that in there um, before I forget. So looking at the video length, it's already getting quite long. So I'm actually going to save the headlight rebuild part for a separate video, make that a part two. It's already in the works, um, so stay tuned, guys.